Ladies and gentlemen, fellas, 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 welcome back to the channel. And this is going to be week one waiver wire video, which is basically, since we don't have any games yet played, it's basically just an extension of your, your drafts. It's okay, you, you left your drafts, you got six bench spots, hopefully none less than that. If you're in four bench leagues, you got to bump those up. But six bench spots, maybe it's 10 bench spots, 20 plus round drafts, whatever it is. And now you're trying to just tighten up your waivers. You got a guy on IR, you can add another player, whatever it might be, heading into the season. And this is that week one waiver video or just players you should have drafted and i've got eight of them right now across a bunch of different positions so we'll go through this and what i'm using as sort of a barometer so obviously your league maybe it's sharper maybe there's more bench spots some of these guys might not be available the goal is that at least one of them are so you can go ahead and add them right so what i'm using is espm uh, we can use a consensus as well 50 percent or less owned meaning that if you're going to see a guy be on the waiver wire it means that he's just not owned in 60 percent of leagues right so if they're owned in less than 50 percent of the leagues i'm going to put them on this list if i deem them worthy of being on your teams because hey week one they have a chance if they get that role if, if the wide receiver one role one of these players two of these players has heading into the season actually pays off and we see that week one well they're going to be the highest ad the highest budget spent on their fab free agency budget that you see in week one, you have them on your roster. You saw this video in time. So let's get into it with eight players. Actually, one of them is an honorable mention because he's 54% owned, but it's close enough. And I thought, you know, a lot of people out there will probably benefit from knowing this. And we can start with that guy. So hit the like button, if you appreciate that. We already have my schedule pinned up on my Twitter for this week. We're going to have a start and sit live stream tomorrow on Wednesday. We have a bunch of DFS stuff, betting videos, props. Check it all out. Live streams for the showdown slate on Thursday. The kickoff to the season, million dollars to first on DFS. Check it all out. It's linked down below and in my Twitter bio for the schedule. So the first player we'll talk about is Jacoby Myers, who is owned in 54% of leagues. So that's a large amount, not majority, but a large amount of leagues where he's not owned right now. And he is the wide receiver one on this Patriots team. He was last year. He led this team last year in targets. Yes, it was not the, the most pass-friendly team. They were a bottom four team in pace last year, but he still led this team in targets last year. And I know they gave a lot of money to Nelson Aguilar. And I know they gave a nice contract to Kendrick Bourne for his skill set. Bourne's definitely not the number one. They're going to run a lot of two wide receiver sets with Aguilar, who was banged up for most of the camp, and the wide receiver one from last year in Jacoby Myers. Now, this is the former preseason 2019 MVP. He's an undrafted free agent, and he was the second highest graded player in this current preseason at the wide receiver position you might be saying oh it's just preseason no he was playing for about a quarter to quarter and a half for most of these games against starting caliber cornerbacks second highest graded wide receiver he ended up seeing eight targets on 25 routes about a 32 percent target share and he did not leave this field in those two wide receiver sets and this is a guy who played a lot of slot wide receiver in 2019 with them as an undrafted free agent he got some run during that regular season with tom brady he played majority of the slot now he's moving to the outside and he dominated there last year he was top 10 in efficiency number eight in yards per route run and 20% of his passes were not catchable because Cam Newton was not the most accurate passer. I mean, that's why he did not get this job. There's now some other reasons as well, you know, the COVID status and all that missed five days of practice, but you're replacing that 20% of his passes not catchable last year with now getting the most accurate college quarterback of all time, Alabama's Mac Jones into the fold as a starting quarterback. I mean, it's wheels up for Jacoby Myers, who goes as the wide receiver 62 right now, goes undrafted in a lot of your leagues watching this. He's a top 40 wide receiver right now for me. So the second player we'll talk about in the first one who's below this 50% threshold is 42% owned. The teammate of Jacoby Myers, actually, we're not gonna have only all Patriots on this, but it's James White. So yeah, 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 ready? James White, 42% on that. James White's not that appealing. No, this Mac Jones thing and some other news that has happened with Sony Michelle being traded, it's important. Ramondre Stevenson is the direct backup to Damian Harris. Yes, neither of them are going to have pass catching responsibilities as long as James White is there, who last year was a strong use in this offense. I mean, he had a 17% target share, number three amongst running backs last year. The problem was they just played so slow. That pace that I mentioned, they were 29th, fourth slowest pace team in the NFL because of the way that Cam Newton plays. Naturally, I mean, he's a mobile quarterback, runs more clock. They wanted to play deliberately slow last year, milk down the clock on offense because they did not trust their offense to score a lot of points. So if you're milking down the clock on your side, the other team doesn't have as many possessions on their side to actually make use. Hope that your defense can stop them. This year, we're going to see much more up-tempo like we saw in the preseason with Mac Jones when Mac Jones targeted running backs 28.9% of the time. Yes, 28.9% of his passes came on checkdowns. Why? Because he gets through his progressions. He can see that third and fourth read to the running back if nothing else is open earlier in that. And he's not as mobile, nowhere near as mobile as potentially the most athletic quarterback of all time, Cam Newton, was last year for this offense. Means more checkdowns to James White. And I'm not saying White's going to be a top 10 running back, but for a guy who's on the waivers in majority of leagues right now, for me, James White is easily a top 40 running back. He's my number 35 running back right now in my updated draft guide and there's no way a guy like that should be on waivers in the far majority of leagues like he is right now he was also efficient so he still got it he was number two in yards per out run only behind Kamara last year out of running back so when he gets the ball in his hands after the catch efficiency wise he still has it that's our second player now 
Heading into the third player, it's going to be another wide receiver who was the hype machine. The biggest hype player out of any camp, whether it's veterans, rookies, no matter where they were. It happened to be New York, which is the biggest media outlet, which hint, hint, that probably goes hand in hand. But then he ended up getting hurt. He hurt his groin. And this is Elijah Moore, who is only owned in 38% of leagues. Now, a lot of the times, rookies, for the most part, historically in fantasy, you know, you, you shouldn't be expecting much. But these last two to three years out of rookie wide receivers and really rookie running backs last year popped it off. And as they're more prepared heading into college, they're going to Exos. They're going to these training facilities that are just as equipped as NFL facilities now and you're going to these top programs that basically the nfl is stealing how they run their offenses in the top programs it's very very becoming a seamless transition just as justin jefferson last year and now elijah moore is only owned in 38 percent of leagues he's on the waivers in 72 percent of leagues out there right now and he's going to be the starting receiver i mean i don't really know if i buy him moving to the outside like they say right he, he played 99 percent of his snaps last year routes run was in the slot now he's going to move to the z on the outside we'll see what happens he's going to have the opportunity he's talented the second round pick out there but the big thing is jamison crowder is already questionable for week one crowder is leaning questionable if not closer to doubtful for week one if he misses, Elijah Moore is going to be the starting slot receiver, going to be the starting slot receiver right away for this team from day one. And that's pretty damn good for the talent that he has with a rookie quarterback with an improved offensive line that's still somewhat shaky, though, from last year. We'll see if the new rookie, Vera Tucker, can enhance it. But week one, maybe some more quick passes to the slot. You get to see something pop. Might as well have him on your roster than having to spend money after this week to add. The fourth player we'll talk about is just Trey Lance. And Trey Lance was somebody that everybody wanted to have. And, and really, if you're in like sharper communities being drafted a lot in like the 10th round or so, but he had a bad preseason. Now, if you look at the stats, okay, he threw a couple touchdown passes, that'll look good. And there's going to seem like there was a lot of drops, but those drops really aren't, aren't on the wide receivers. I mean, 10 drops in the preseason and like a, 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 one full game of play, four quarters, that's more so on Trey Lance for throwing fastballs nonstop. Like he doesn't know how to throw a changeup. If you watch this game, it's like six yard slants that he's throwing absolute rockets at you. It's pretty hard to catch those no matter how sure handed, like most of his receivers, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk dropping these passes are. So poor preseason play slowed the hype a little bit. The fact that Jimmy G is likely and already at this point definitely going to be the star. And the only way Jimmy G is not the starter is obviously if he gets hurt one, which has been a thing the last couple of years, but also if he just struggles like this 49ers team might have the best defense in the NFL right now. They have some of the best skill position group players. They have probably the best offensive coordinator in the NFL, at least from a run scheme perspective, if not overall. So you put all those things together. And if this team starts five and one, there's no way that you're going to get a healthy Jimmy G unless he is really, really struggling and the defense is getting pick sixes all the time. There's just no way he's coming out. So this would have to be like a two and two start, a one and three start for them to turn the reins over to Trey Lance. But Lance is going to be involved. He has his own packages, red zone packages, rotating series here and there for three plays per drive, kind of like a Taysom Hill, except much better because he's a way better prospect and, and quarterback than Taysom Hill is as a former special teams player. So it's just 32% owned. It's definitely worth at least putting him on your bench. I don't really like rostering two quarterbacks often. Like if you get a Dak, a Kyler Murray, one of these elite quarterbacks, Josh Allen, like a top 10 quarterback, don't waste another roster spot with somebody else. But if you're taking a quarterback later in drafts, a Derek Carr, a Matthew Stafford, a Matt Ryan type of guy, get this guy in there because he's going to be a top 10 quarterback every week if and when he starts. So we got four players left. The rest of these four players are wide receivers. They are all right now at least, they're less than 20% owned on rosters. And one of them is less than 10% owned. So you're going to get some massive upside here if you just stash these guys on your bench for the first week, two, three weeks, whatever it might be. Before we dive into that, I want to let you know about the sponsor of the program, Prize Picks, who we'll be talking about a lot when we talk about Thursday showdown slate, when we talk about the Friday slate uh, for DFS, the main slate, all that stuff. You can find it linked down below and coming out later this week. But Prize Picks, if you want to use the code SAL, it's just prop betting. So you get a match up to $100. So if you use the code SAL, you will get a hundred dollar free bet free bets on props you take the over unders on yards receiving yards we'll be having a video on saturday for player props specifically so get it now it's a limited time offer they're doing this bonus during the beginning of the nfl season you can check it out if you use the code sal free bet up to hundred dollars fre free four more plays number five that we'll talk about is sterling shepherd he's only owned in 19 percent of leagues i think there's a real case to be made that sterling shepherd is a number one receiver on this team i know they paid kenny galladay i know just stature why kenny galladay seems like the number one receiver but kenny galladay is not a reception hog he's not a target hog he's a jump ball receiver down the field who yes had a very nice season one time with Matthew Stafford. He came out as a 24 year old prospect. He's already 27. Now he's going to an offense that has likely the worst offensive line in the league, one of the bottom five quarterbacks in the league. I don't know if that's fully Daniel Jones' fault as much as it is uh, the offensive line, but turnovers are turnovers, and Daniel Jones has a lot of those. And in my opinion, there's a strong chance that leading this team in targets this year is Sterling Shepard and likely receptions if he stays healthy. I mean, Evan Ingram's already banged up. There's no Golden Tate there. Darius Slayton is basically just an outside younger uh, Kenny Galladay for a jump ball receiver with just more speed than Galladay. And then you have Saquon there. So one of those guys 
guys, I think, between Saquon and Shepard. And I think it'll be Shepard. And you saw that in the preseason. I mean, he had a lot of usage in the preseason from Daniel Jones in the one half that the starters played. Why? Well, when the offensive line is breaking down and you need to get the ball out quick, go to Sterling Shepard, who now is going to move from the outside where he played a lot last year back into the slot where he played three years ago during his biggest season ever because he's had some injuries since then. So I think right now, a guy who is by far not owned at all, who is, in my opinion, a number one receiver on his team. Yes, Galladay money-wise is going to say that, but the guy at the end of the day who actually gets the most targets receptions on this team, touchdowns, we can give that to Galladay, but the rest, the usage, the volume, Sterling Shepard. Number six is Terrace Marshall, who's only owned in 18% of leagues, the rookie wide receiver out of LSU, second round pick, should have been a first round pick, only reason that he didn't go in the first round was this is a somewhat deep wide receiver class and he had some issue that came up from college that or from high school actually that pushed him down a little bit that was uh, when people started digging into it a little bit more it was the medicals but he seems to be completely fine he played in the slot which is the by far most targeted position for Sam Darnold in his NFL career going all the way back to college when he played at USC with Juju Smith-Schuster whether it was Deontay Burnett right when he got into the league there was Quincy and Nunwa the, the, the big slot plus bulky guy for a little bit in there Jamison Crowder a bunch even when you see guys stepping in there you see Braxton Berrios got a 25 plus percent target but now you have the freak of all freaks there one of the most athletic prospects at the wide receiver position ever to come out in Terrace Marshall who had 13 touchdowns in 2019 in a Joe Brady office in at LSU when Jamar Chase was there when Justin Jefferson was there who's had 25 touchdowns in his last two years of college he's going to be a red zone weapon I know that McCaffrey's back but there's a real chance that all three of these receivers can do good even with McCaffrey there last year their three receivers all finished top 25 and you can right now get Terrace Marshall on the waiver wire so this is a guy that I don't know if he's going to finish 35th when you start to infuse McCaffrey and maybe Dan Arnold does a little bit more than the tight ends did last year but if it finishes 38th to 40th that's massive value and it's definitely not going to be on the waivers mid-season the final two players here number seven is a wide receiver hit the like button if you're still here and he's only 12 percent owner it's brian edwards who is right now the x receiver john brown said hey this guy's too good this guy looks like Devonte adams is what Derek carr said this guy looks like to is what his coach john gruden said and he said okay we, we can't be doing this we can't be doing this right now john brown says let me get out of here and try and play somewhere else so the x receiver on this team right now is brian edwards he is a better athlete overall than henry ruggs who was drafted in the first round who they said right now in camp needs to get better at everything else except his speed not great if that's all you have and that's why you're drafted typically that's how it goes for those types of receivers ask john ross ask marquise hollywood brown but he's the number one receiver on this team is Brian Edwards behind Darren Waller, of course. Brian Edwards has the youngest breakout age ever at 17 years old. He recorded a 100-yard game, the youngest breakout age ever. The next closest guy to him in terms of breakout age is Juju Smith-Schuster, and he's had by far a very nice career. Now, Brian Edwards early on last year hurt his foot. He hurt his ankle literally within the first week to two weeks of the season. He was dealing with that ankle injury for the majority of the year after that. So people see his lackluster rookie year, third-round pick, and they say, eh, we don't want this guy. But Derek Carr cons consistently is a quality, quality quarterback and now if you give the rookie a second year when he actually gets a camp actually gets a preseason they didn't play him at all in the preseason because they value him that much and now he's over this injury I like him and at this point look give it one or two weeks keep him on your bench this is a player that is a wide receiver one on his team with real real athletic measures one of the most athletic receivers to ever come out of the draft especially taken in the third round it's a steal and if he pops off in week one for five catches 120 yards and a touchdown or in week two it happens you're going to have one of the most coveted free agency pickups of the entire year on your roster now the final guy the eighth guy we'll talk about is less than 10 percent owned and there's an obvious reason why he is and that's Rashad Bateman. He's on the short-term IR. I think people think that he's on the actual IR, which means you're out for six weeks. Short-term IR. He's expected to miss only really three weeks. He's only 8% owned right now. If you have an IR spot in your league, pick this guy up and put him on the IR spot. You absolutely lose nothing by doing that. If you don't, and you can just cut weight with a backup quarterback, don't be holding two kickers. Don't be holding two defenses. Don't be holding a backup tight end. Put those guys, pick up somebody who actually has league winning upside for you, who is literally only owned in 8% of leagues right now on the waivers in 92% of leagues. So probably the majority of your leagues. This was a first round pick by the Baltimore Ravens that the Packers were about to take for Aaron Rodgers. That's how much they valued him. This is potentially, in my opinion, the best route runner in this class. He models out like a Stefan Diggs and Keenan Allen, the way that he wins, not the biggest of receivers, but can dominate in the short and intermediate range from a route running perspective. And he was great. He was great in college. Rashad Bateman for me is the by far number one pass catcher on this team ahead of Mark Andrews, ahead of Hollywood Brown, who's dealt with a hamstring injury, definitely ahead of Sammy Watkins at this point in Watkins career. You lose JK Dobbins, who is a better pass catcher than Gus Edwards coming in. There's just more of a target share now available for the week three or week four of the season when you get Rashad Bateman back out there again like we're talking about with the Brian Edwards of the world and potentially Elijah Moore's of the world although I prefer Corey Davis with the Jets but these are guys that could maybe be the number one receiver on their team it's not definitely locked down by anybody there Sterling Shepard another one that we've talked about and they're on the waiver wire right now just pick them up and stop holding players that have no upside like a backup tight end or by all means a kicker so there's eight players that is the players you should have drafted and your week one waiver wire pickups and we'll be having the waiver wire video every week a bunch of other content already released a first look for DFS more content, betting video tomorrow, the Star and Sidham stream, more stuff as the week goes on. We'll have props, the final thoughts, the live stream on Sunday. Check it all out. The schedule is pinned up on my Twitter, which is on the screen right now. You can check out the rest down below.
like subscribe before you go and support the sponsors of the program that keeps all these these lights on i mean it lets me get a shirt that makes me look like a seven-year-old fucking kindergarten right here but it pops off the colors the lights keeps people engaged you can check it out down below prize picks use the code sal you get a free bet we'll be talking about prize picks all season long they're the by far majority sponsor not exclusive but majority sponsor of the show because i love the platform it is extremely easy you get the board with all the props you get in there before like you start placing your props now wednesday thursday before the game start on sunday you're gonna get much better closing line value so i urge you to check it out you know you're gonna be betting props this year anyways might as well get a free hundred dollar bet use the code sal down below and i'll see you in the next one tomorrow in the betting video and on that live stream so the notification bell so you get notified of when we're going live so i'm not sitting here in a party of one by myself talking about my own lineups to myself on the camera because that's not a good use of my time so come ask me a question so i can be like eh. all right peace out see you in the next one